friends, it's Jay. Today's video was inspired by my last video, which was about juicy fruity florals for spring. Um, the fragrances in this list are going to be still sweet, um, but they lack that juicy element that I feel the fragrances in the last video have. Um, they're still fruity, still floral, like I said, sweet. Um, they're not gourmand. Um, they're not necessarily the sweetest fragrances that you would come across. There, I feel, is still a, an element of freshness to these fragrances, but um, they do definitely have some sweetness to them. Um, I feel like they can be worn in casual occasions. Um, to dress casual occasions. Um, they're not formal fragrances at all. They're fun, they're flirty, you know. Um, what I envision is being outside, but I think that you can wear them indoors as well. I think I'm just trying to get outside. I'm tired of being in the house, and so when I think about this, these fragrances, I think about warm weather, kind of a breeze, and I feel like how I feel um, trying to envision how beautiful, you know, the sillage of these fragrances would be just being outside. So let's get into the video. The first fragrance that I want to talk about is Dahlia Devon, and this is the EDP by Givenchy. Um, this fragrance is tart in the beginning when you spray it. Um, I've been sneezing in my videos and I'm going to kind of take it easy. So I'll give a little spray <laughs> and just give it a little minute. So yes, this is a, a tart but sweet fragrance. Um, some of the notes are black currant, there's um, green apple, there's peach in here, plum, there's citruses, um, definitely some white florals, but there is this beautiful musky vanilla at the base um, that I love. I love this type of, of musk in a fruity floral fragrance. And that's, I mean, on top of the fruits, I think that's the vanilla and the musk make it feel kind of sweet like candy to me, like a tart, sweet, um, fruity floral candy. And I think that's the, the vibe of all of these fragrances. So yeah, this one is really beautiful. Um, again, this is the EDP. Now, when you look, I when I ever I look online for this fragrance, the cap is um, white, but this is definitely the EDP when I look down at the base. So, um, if you see one like this, and if you see the white cap, I feel like they would be the same fragrance. So, again, that is Dahlia Devon um, by Givenchy, the EDP. The next one, and I've said in previous videos, but I haven't shown it yet, I feel like is a very similar fragrance to Dahlia Devon, and this is Lancome Idole. This is the original EDP. I feel like this fragrance, well, let's just say, um, this fragrance it has pear. There's two types of rose. There's jasmine. For me, when rose and jasmine get together, it's something beautiful. Um something beautiful um but also it has that vanillic musky base and i think that is what reminds me of the dahlia devon so it's a little less tart and fruity at the top um that pear gives it a little more of an aquatic nature um so this could have almost been in my last video with the juicy fragrances but i didn't put it in that video because i don't feel that the pear is what this fragrance is centered around once it starts to dry down. So you definitely get that um, juicy pear in the beginning, like I said, which gives a, a juicy nature, you know? It gives somewhat of an aquatic nature, but as this fragrance starts to die down, you definitely get that rose, you get the jasmine, and that beautiful, beautiful vanillic musk, which um, I'm in love with, with all of these fragrances. Well, these top two for sure. Um, so yeah, this is the Lancome Idole, the original EDP. Beautiful. Um, the next one that I have is Absolutely Blooming by Miss Dior. Well, it's by Dior. It's Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming. Let me see if you can get that. Okay. Um, I'll definitely link all of these in the description box. That way you guys can um, tell. I always do that. So if you need to know the name of a fragrance, just look down in my description box and you'll find it there. Um, but this fragrance is a little bit, 
not a little bit um i was gonna say a little bit powdery but let me give you an idea of the notes um i love that hound's tooth on the bottom that's really pretty but anyway um there's a lot of berries a lot of berries at the top some rose and some musk at the base and really that's what this fragrance is about when you spray this fragrance um like i said it's a it's a little bit powdery a little bit musky and in a way as it all blends together it kind of oh it's beautiful okay so you get those berries on top um mixing with the rose and that musk it almost makes me feel like um it's kind of like a i must want to say a sweet tart or a pez or something like that um it's definitely got a slightly powdery feel from that musk but again um the berries are at the top very sweet kind of syrupy ish berries um they're a little bit sweeter than uh they have a little bit more sweetness than what a natural berry would have like a, a ripe natural berry would have i would say there's more sugar in this fragrance so um kind of like a syrupy macerated berry type sweetness um the rose is actually it's fresh it's fresh but it's also on the sweeter side as well um and again that musk this is a very um as are all of these like airy sweet fruity floral fragrances so that is miss dior absolutely blooming this one is beautiful i need to wear it more how many frag do you guys find yourself saying that i find <laughs> i find myself saying that a lot i need to wear this more i need to wear this more maybe i'll do um a fragrance tray that might help me to you know be more attentive to the fragrances in my collection so anyway the next fragrance that i have is um by uh, excuse me by latafa and this is fakar okay um this fragrance has pomegranate um i think there's some citruses at the top but definitely some other fruits tons of florals in here i mean there's jasmine there is um orange blossom honeysuckle lang lang i think there's even some rose went that rose when i said that that reminded me when you when you look this up i think there is a fakar in like a black square bottle clearly this is not square and black but when i when i see the name of this fragrance listed it is fakar um rose so if that is easier to help you you know fi find this fragrance online type in latafa Bacar rose um but back to the fragrance this definitely gives a tartness in the beginning um but it's almost like a, a jolly rancher feel that the the fruit is like a jolly rancher feel and it's very very um nice and what it does is i mean there's a good dose of vanilla in this fragrance as well um with the white florals i get a lot of honeysuckle with this fragrance um so it's sweet and it's tart and it is airy very playful um but yeah a lot of honeysuckle that i get with this fragrance so um Try this one out. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this one. And it's probably the most inexpensive fragrance that I will list on this in this in this video. Um, the other ones you can probably get for 50, 60. The last one might be a little bit more expensive, but I would say probably try to get these fragrances within that range. I, I and I would say that that was a reasonable price. So try not to spend more than maybe 70 bucks for these fragrances, um, especially not this one. This lasting power is good. Um, so, and it's a, it's, it's, um, what was I going to say? It's definitely a, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that the Middle Eastern fragrances, as far as from the brand of Latafa, tend to be more inexpensive anyway. So do not spend $70 on this fragrance. And that is what I was trying to say. So keep this in the range of like $30, maybe even $40 for this fragrance. So that is Latafa um, Fakar, Rose Fakar or Fakar Rose. I'll put it up or down below.
So next, <laughs> the next fragrance that I have is Ely Saab in white. Ely Saab is definitely one of my favorite brands. Um, I think Francis Kirkjohn is the nose behind this house or these fragrances in this house, at least um, the Le Parfum series. So this fragrance is definitely fruity. There are peaches in here, red berries. Um, not sure, could be, I don't think there's black currant. I think it's really just peach and um, red berries, but definitely, definitely, here we go with the orange blossom. All of the fragrances in the Parfum, um, Le Parfum series have orange blossom in them. Um, but what I will say is that the base is a little more ambery. So it is, mm, so it's tart in the top. It's a theme. It's a theme. Um, tart in the top, um, with the fruits. The floral is what I'm trying to get more of. It's actually not as sweet. This fragrance, I feel should have been probably closer to the top on this list um, because the vanilla sweetness that a lot of these have or the sugary sweetness that a lot of these have is not necessarily in this fragrance. So it does stay a little bit more tart. Um, so I would actually put this probably before. This is probably the least sweet fragrance, although it, there is some sweetness there, but the least sweet fragrance in this list. Um, yeah, that is In White by Ely Saab. The next fragrance that I have on this list is another fragrance that opens with pear. There's pear and bergamot. This is, um, Le Interdite, and this is the original EDP by Givenchy. Um, the pear is definitely... So I don't get so much juice from this pear, but I get fresh pear, which is still juicy just as a natural sweet fruit. So I would say the pear in this is more naturally ripe and sweet and juicy in that way, um, but not a beverage, okay? Um, there is a lot of, um, I do get that bubblegummy, grapey feel that people talk about, but subtly. Um, in this fragrance, and I think that would come from the tuberose, but there is also jasmine in this fragrance. Um, and when you get down to the base, there's patchouli and there's vetiver. So <clears throat> it is sweet. It is floral um, and like a candy sweet at the top, bubblegummy, grapey type feel. But in the base, I get a little bit of um, spice. Uh, I don't know if spice is the right word to use. Um, what would I say? Patchouli and vetiver. So woody, maybe slightly on this mildly spicy side in the base, um, only because of the patchouli and the vetiver. Um, let me know if you guys have a better way of describing the base. I, I still am kind of conflicted about using that word spicy. I don't, I don't necessarily feel that it is, um, spicy, but it's not only woody, um, patchouli and vetiver in the base. So that is interdite, la interdite, um, pear, bubblegummy, grapey, tuberose, um, and some patchouli and vetiver in the base. The last fragrance that I have is um this is the most expensive actually and it's actually for me from my nose the most sweet and this is perdizione by um noble 1942 this is to me a fresher version of love don't be shy um there's neroli in here orange blossom some lavender but definitely a heavy heavy dose of vanilla in this fragrance um so that neroli what it does for this fragrance it it neroli is bitter um it's a it's a flower that doesn't have much sweetness at all and so when you add it on top of the orange blossom it tempers that sweetness um and the lavender does as well it gives it um just an aromatic feel as well but when you spray it and as it as it dries down definitely orangey 
You cannot deny the orange in this fragrance. Um, vanillic. Arom <laughs> Sorry, guys. Aromatic. <laughs> Aromatic. And beautiful. So a sweet orange blossom with a bright, fresh, slightly bitter top with a lot of vanilla. <laughs> I thought I was going to get away. <laughs> I need some testing strips. But yes, again, this is a sweet vanillic orange blossom. You definitely get the feel of orange in this fragrance. So that is Perdizione by Noble 1942. I'm so sorry for the sneezing. Um, I am going to get some tester strips for you guys. But thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, what fragrances in your collection do you find to be candy sweet? Um, leave them in the comments. That's it for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Love, Jay. Bye-bye.